So, two things before I talk about Sweden beating Switzerland. Well, nothing. Um, I don't have to retire another jersey. So we'll stay like this and for the quarterfinals, at least on, up, up, up until then. After the quarterfinals, it might be all empty, but for three quarterfinals at this World Cup, I'm set. I'm still hoping it will be a little bit like it was four years ago, but there I had three jerseys from that particular World Cup. This time I only have this France jersey so far and probably will stay this way, to be honest. Uh, but there I had three jerseys, three made it to the semi-final, but none of the winning jerseys was there. I had the Brazil 2014, I had the Dutch from 2014, and of course I had the Argentina jersey that we already retired for this World Cup. And the other thing, the final that I said yesterday, um, kind of as a semi-joke, Belgium Sweden is still very much alive. Didn't look too good yesterday um, and the way the game was going I was also a little bit skeptical today but yeah Sweden and Belgium are still both alive. Well we talked about Belgium already yesterday, yesterday let's talk about Sweden and Switzerland. Um, at the beginning of the tournament I said the European matchups are the big winners and are the producing the best matches that was right before the last round. Uh, when there's something really on the line European teams don't tend to make that great matchups and we saw it with Russia, Russia with Spain It was boring as can be uh, Croatia Denmark was not much better and Sweden Switzerland just fit right in there But here we didn't expect something better here We expected that two neutral nations will neutralize themselves and it's almost what happened here um, Caveat uh, to whatever I'm saying I'm missing about 30 minutes of the game. I watched the first 15 minutes at the office uh, and then I had to drive. I had a little bit, I was listening, but no, I didn't get too much except yeah, that the game is developing very similar to Spain and Russia with one having the possession and the other one being um, rather well organized. And I saw the full second half, uh, but you know, not super attentively to be honest. But um, yeah. Sweden got out firing. They had two or three really big chances. Uh, one that Berg really uh, missed badly, I, I want to say. I mean, he had the clear shot and then it goes seemingly in the other direction. And then a few others where the Swiss defense was not quite uh, well organized and uh, Sweden could take uh, advantage of some bad positioning on the Swiss part, but never, but couldn't score. So that was. Um, the disadvantage and then uh, Switzerland uh, took control of the game but without being um, kind of this attacking force which is not in their nature like Japan had uh, had um, at the beginning always control and used it to push forward Sweden was just uh, Switzerland was just going out wide now I'm starting to switch those two countries although I'm very well aware of those two uh, been quite different entities. The only thing they have in common is neutrality and that they're wealthy and probably a little bit uh, reserved people although I think this is more a Swedish trait than a Swiss trait given at least especially this team. Yeah, um, Sweden defended very well and with this defense uh, and their organization this is maybe the least limited team of the ones that are still left in the, in the tournament but it's also the best organized and they have their uh, attacking threats they're not the superstars or, or over there but they work they, in their workman likeness they are really effective and they're doing and they're doing their job quite well and Sweden it's not an accident Sweden already scored uh, quite a few goals in the group session with three against Mexico, uh, two in the other games and at least one in every other game. So they have scored. They have some scoring in them and it's also not a surprise that they actually, if you look at it, uh, I've bemoaned a lot that Italy is not at the World Cup, but when I look, look at Sweden, uh, it doesn't feel that bad anymore. Yes, Italy is the more talented team and yes, the coach messed up the tactics, but the Sweden team is actually acquitting Italy a little bit and maybe makes UEFA think about the qualification mode. So the game never never really got rolling um, and Forsberg got a clear shot, was deflected right into the corner 
And that was the winning goal right uh, two minutes before Sweden had another chance where they probably should have made a goal. Then Switzerland tried to do something, but I think uh, except for Seferovic um, putting in a header towards the end of the game uh, and once having actually clear possession of the ball but not being able to uh, take the ball and convert it quickly into something but stopping it, letting it bounce once, but letting it probably bounce even second and then making a shot which uh, goes up wide. That was basically a Swiss glory in that game. And Sweden probably should have had a second if um, the attacker wasn't, like, it's similar to the Croatia game, the attacker wasn't uh, being pushed down and a uh, penalty was given, it was reviewed. Uh, that was one of those, those reviews that seemed a little bit pointless. That game is at that moment decided. Uh, this was at the end of um, uh, the um, stoppage time. At that point, the game was decided. I don't need to lose two minutes. Whether you give the penalty or not, it makes exactly no difference because whatever was going next was the last shot. And where Switzerland loses 2-0 or 1-0, I don't think it matters for them because all of them knew this is the last shot of the game. So for that reason, yeah, uh, that was one of the more pointless video assistant reviews. I know they want to make it all correct and so on, but you know, a little bit of uh, common sense here and there will also help uh, getting VAR a little bit better of repetition. Jersey matchup, I actually liked. I uh, was very happy to see Switzerland in the I uh, was the Swiss uh, Switzerland in the red jerseys with the white. Although I still find all these patches and so on on the player jerseys. In the stands, you saw the commercial version, which is not as dotty, especially here. It just has this dot pattern on the front. Your uh, Jurg was the same. It looks really, really odd. It looked actually good on the pictures uh, when you can buy them, but on the field, it looks really odd. And then there are some spots on there that just don't make sense. Uh, to me, but yeah, uh, overall, I think it was a nice classic uh, European matchup. I mean, not my absolute favorite. I think both matchups yesterday were better, but for what it was, it was good. And yeah, as I said, two neutral nations almost neutralizing each other. And I guess that will be the title for the video. Let me know what you thought about this game, and I will talk to you soon. We have one, hopefully, a cracker in the evening. The signs, the names look good. I hope the game will be too. Up until then. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.